as he ended his speech, um, he, he described the Britain that they promised 13 years ago to re-energise, to, to, to create or to help create. Obviously, governments don't do it on their own. Um, he described what they should have done, not what they have done. And what he now wants, and we'll, like I say, we'll talk more after uh, after two about this. I want to focus on transport to start with. Um, it, he he now wants you to accept that he almost wasn't there. A man who was a chancellor, um, a man who was a conservative MP, is a conservative MP, a man who has been a conservative for years, that he wasn't there while all of these things were, were not happening or were happening depending on what you're talking about. He wasn't there for that. He's here for the future bit. He's here for the fixing it bit. He's the man that represents change, the change that Britain needs, the change that will bring the infrastructure we need. Try telling Henry Morrison that he's getting the infrastructure that the country needs um, to give the NHS what it needs. And I'm sort of paraphrasing what he said at the end of his speech there. The best education system in the world. Uh, he urged people to commit uh, to, to these ideas and to stay together. I think that was him talking to the party. He, he, he talked about a benefits, a, a country where the benefits system is a safety net, not a way of life. I think we all know what he's trying to say there. Where antisocial behaviour, or what did he say, where we call antisocial behaviour what it is, a crime, not some social condition. Well, of course, antisocial behaviour is often a crime. Um, but it's other things too, isn't it? You know, it's, it is sometimes more new, often more nuanced than that. He knows that. He's smart enough to know that. He's ignoring that. And then he had the gall, and, and I, I really do mean the gall. He had the gall to say that this is a country where elderly people have their dignity. And I can tell you that some do, thank God, and some do because of the fantastic work of families, of nurses, of doctors, of carers. Uh, thank God for that. Some do. But many thousands, tens of thousands, possibly even hundreds of thousands, really don't have their dignity and don't have their safety and don't have company and don't have the care that they need. That's just a fact and we know it. He knows it. So to give... I, you know, I get that a speech is a speech and the end of a speech, the big peroration is important to deliver and all that jazz. But, you know, don't insult the elderly people sitting in their own pee this afternoon because nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. Don't insult uh, the carers who can't see anybody for more than 10 minutes because they've got to see 25 people in one day. Don't insult them. Uh, and to tell the young people of this country that they have the opportunity that they need. Do they? All of them? Every one of them? I don't think so. He painted a picture of a Britain that the Conservatives meant to build, but somehow didn't get round to it in 13 years. That would be my assessment of the peroration of Mr Sunak's speech. Don't even get me started on when politicians bring their spouses on. Uh, to say how marvellous they are. It's happened before. He's not the first to do it. I just think it is so puke-making. <laughs> it's just... I, don't, I barely have the words for it. It's so embarrassing. I mean, you wouldn't do it at work, would you? You know, you wouldn't bring your partner in or your best friend or, you know, to say... to almost give you a reference every day at work or on a big day at work, you know? It'd be like me getting somebody on to say, in the first couple of minutes of my programme, maybe it's a big programme, big overnight election special or something, get somebody on who loves me to say how fantastic I am. It's just odd, isn't it? It's plain odd. Ballpark figure, how many billions of pounds of uh, economy has been lost here to the north of England? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we worked out that... I mean, we didn't work out, sorry, the Northern Powers Independent Economic Review, which was done by people who are better at maths than me. Um, so I'm not just bad at analogies, I'm also bad at maths, it turns out, today, Sheila. Uh, so it's been, it's, it's been a, a tough, tough day week. for me. You've had a tough it's week. It's been a tough week. So what the Northern Powers Independent Economic Review showed is that you can get somewhere somewhere significantly over 100 billion of economic benefit from delivering HS2 Northern Powerhouse Rail in full... Over what period of time? ...related interventions every year from every 2050 year. so we'd have paid back the cost of the integrated rail plan that was those lines east to west and finishing hs2 
Every year we'd get the economic value on a recurring basis. From the combined so, northern economies. From the combined network. So every year you get the benefit that you spend. So it's not just like one year you get the benefit. Yeah. You, the first year basically pays for it and mm. every other year is bonus. So this is so, a disaster for you? Yes, it is. And Andy Burnham said that this would shrink the size of the northern economy. He's absolutely right. It will shrink the size of the northern economy. Uh, and I mean, at the moment, people in the north of England earn uh, £8,000 a year less than people in London South East. That will continue, probably, broadly. You might get some productivity gains from driving and delivering Northern Powers Rail, but because the scheme is younger and isn't as mature, it's going to take so long to deliver those benefits that, again, I'll probably be retired before people in the north of England see any real benefit. And that's another 20 years of low productivity, of poorer life chances, um, all because this Prime Minister is more interested in pretending he cares about towns, not actually think about the people who live in those towns who often rely on cities for some of their prosperity or at least for some of their families' jobs and opportunities being linked. And that that political and economic choice is a massive a massive mistake for this government. Um, and it is one that I think here in the north of England we will unfortunately have to live with. The Prime Minister, after he finishes, will go off, I'm sure, and have a great life, maybe in the States, whatever he chooses to do next. I plan to still wife. be living here, Sheila. I've yes. got to live with this. Do you mean yeah. so? And my family will be living with it and people who are my neighbours and friends will be living with it. Um, and I'm really happy for Bradford getting its new station. There's mm. some positives in here. I'm ha- happy Hull's getting its electrification back. But those were all things we were already promised would be part of Northern Powerhouse Rail. No one said in the last general election when Boris Johnson stood to be Prime Minister, we'd have to give up our north-south links to get east-west ones. And because it's going to be so much further in the future... It's a terrible, terrible yeah. trade-off. I'm going to give you one more. I'm going to give you one more analogy. I was in his job. Yeah, it's like planning a whole kitchen refurb and being given a kettle and a toaster instead. It, it is, yeah, and and that's again, Sheila, why we need more people from the north of England doing jobs like yours. Because if it hadn't been for people like you, no one would have known this was going to happen. No one would have cared it was going to happen. Um, and I'm really glad people in the north of England at least now know that today their future has been put in peril. A big opportunity for them has been lost. We fought the good fight. We saved Euston working with Business London. We've saved uh, the Northern Pass Rail Line, I hope. But it really depends now about what happens in Parliament. That hybrid bill has got to be safe. Uh, yeah. Because if that gets lost in the parliamentary process, it is an even worse disaster than I've, I think it could be otherwise. All right, Henry, I'm going to have to leave it there. But thank you, Henry Morrison, Director of the Northern Powerhouse Partnership, an independent body that represents businesses across the North.